We're gathered here today to remember our sister, Cheryl Hall. Gone too soon from the competition. Far too soon. She always used to fight for this love. Mm -hmm. She was a lover, she was a friend to many. I wish I could have her back. Do I wish? Yes. Yes, I do. But here, Cheryl, I just want to take a moment's silence. Just for you. The father, the son, and the house of Cheryl. Now that's done. And we're back! Hello, Cheryl Hall! Hello, my friend. How are you doing, Diva? I'm a little hungover, but it's fine. Like, we, we partied last night, didn't we, madam? <laughs> Just a little bit. Well, Cheryl, welcome to the Drag Race Yearbook. As this is your first time, let me tell you how it works. Virgin! Virgin! <laughs> Barely. <laughs> We're going to have a little kiki about your time on Drag Race UK versus the world. And then I'm going to ask you to nominate your fellow queens in our juicy yearbook category. But the only rule is you can't nominate yourself. Got it? I've got it. Good. Category is Shadiest Queen. It's Miss Blue Hydrangea. You could say that Mo was the shady one, but. She is just spitting facts, whereas Madam Blue, she's on the sneak attack, so she'll sneak up and you wouldn't even realise she's read you until you process it. Maybe that's just me being dumb because I haven't realised I've been read. In the words of Mama Roo, you've been read. <laughs> that is very Blue. Blue is giving you the shade for days. Oh, the hokey pokey. If we're going to talk about shadiness, Juju B had a shocker of an episode. What do you think happened with her runways? Because... Many people felt like it was literally the worst of the night. I love Juju with all my heart and soul. And I'm going to keep it 100. We got all the, our stuff ready in a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Shops are closed. Designers aren't working. So you've just got to do whatever you've got to do. Like, drag in the last two years has been so difficult because you just have to make the best with what you've got. And mm -hmm. look, if she couldn't bring her best because of circumstances that is what it is but also she must be exhausted to be on drag race every single year <laughs> it never stops she's a worker she's a working girl she's a hustler oh yes never stops when miss paul calls she's always answering hello <laughs> what's the reaction been like since the episode aired i've seen a lot of love on twitter have you been feeling the love i have truly been feeling the love like look i will keep it 100 when i got eliminated all these months ago you have to sit on it and you get consumed in your thoughts i've clouded my head with a lot of like negativity and beating myself up because i genuinely felt like a failure because i came back to prove something to myself but to everybody that ever doubted me mm -hmm. and to see so many people say you, you were back. You were such a joy to watch on television because that is me through and through. I'm not going to come in to a competition or into an environment and stir the pot, make it difficult to be around me. I'm here for a good time. I'm here to lift up the room because we, we don't know how long we've got in this life. And we really have to make the best out of everything that we are dealt. So look, I got, I got the chop second. That's fine. I'm going to carry on just being me, which is the Queen of Essex. News! So I think some, I think my doorbell rang just then. Sorry about that. Look at that. Is it you, Cheryl? The flowers it's are me. coming in. It's me on the ring doorbell. <laughs> Famously. <laughs> Famously. <laughs> Category is... Biggest Drama Queen. I think the biggest drama queen is Bagger through and through. She will she will find a way to milk something like there's no tomorrow. She knows what she's doing. She knows there's a camera in front of her. So she will up the ante and turn the drama mm. mama. But no, I love the girl to pieces. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of drama coming from Bagger this episode. What did you make of it all in the workroom while she was moaning or lounging around sleeping in front of Miss Ball? I mean, I was shattered. I wish I could have had a nap. But I was, I was, I was too busy just focusing on what I needed to do because look, we all know it's not my forte. We all know it's my uh, Achilles heel or whatever it's called. Like I was just gonna crack on and do what I needed to do. And like a lot of people say, the race 
is the best when you're focused on just driving down your own lane. So I was trying not to get clouded out, but you would catch her whinging in the corner. I was like, bagger, come on, girl. We all knew it was coming. You've just got to make lemons out of lemonade or mm -hmm. just use the lemon to soak up your tequila. Very, very good point. The sewing challenge was a difficult one for you and bagger. Because uh, you weren't happy with the dress that you made. Baby, how did you get to this point? Right, well, actually, I'm going to level with you because you're Medivalina. Uh, we mm -hmm, go mm -hmm. we go way back, Mediva. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yes, we do way, I, way back. I have to say, I in the last hour when we were working in the workroom, the day before the runway, I sewed together my two legs of my cat suit because I'm what? Stupid. So, uh... <laughs> I was exhausted. I wasn't concentrating. I just went, Dee -dee -dee -dee. oh, fudge. And I was like, right, okay. I have an hour and a half. <laughs> I need to do something that I am walking the runway in at least something. So the fact that I had a dress to present on the runway, I'm going to sell the shit out of it regardless. Mm -hmm. I could walk out there in a diaper and they'll say, Cheryl, you look gorgeous. <laughs> and they wouldn't say I look gorgeous. <laughs> from, from the neck up, <laughs> yes. Category is... Best look. I was obsessed when Blue turned up in that Butch Queen look. Fresh off the Bryson Pier, Mr. Muscle Man, mm -hmm. but she looked phenomenal. And I have to say, we don't have much time turn around in between these looks. So you've got to turn it. And I went into this challenge going, right, we've got to do three makeup looks, three different looks. What can I do on my face so I can just build and build and build? She did three faces and she put all those tattoos down her arm in record time and she was still one of the first i will say i was the first one ready for every single runway but mm -hmm. she was one of the first and i was so impressed with her because she's a talent and phenomenon yeah like how long do you actually get in between the runways it is it's not long and trust and believe madam mm. why is she baby you give got the key shut up and drive you gotta go <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go. Put it into third gear. And straight off the track. Let's go. Cool. <laughs> uh, what did you think about the judges' critique, especially for, for you on the runways? I I will <laughs> I will be honest. Keep it 100. I'll keep it 100. My dress was mm. naff. And I knew it was coming. And I, mm. I, I kid you not, I had one baggy armpit. So if you look back at the episode, I'm holding my arm like this. So I'm trying to pose and look like I'm posing, but I'm really holding the saggy armpit. So it looks tight and taut because I was like, oh, like I could be, I could be red for filth right here, right mm -hmm. now. I'm surprised mm -hmm. Rue just didn't send me home there and there going, this dress is awful. How dare you embarrass me on my main stage. But <laughs> I got to stay. And to be honest, the fact that Rue said, I know you're a star. Mm -hmm. I am a star. I am a fucking star. And just just hearing it is just re reiterates everything that I believe in myself because I have doubted everything I've done in the last year since filming this. But it's the realization like, no, I am doing something right. It was just a bad day for myself. Absolutely. We all have those bad days. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think the bottom two were correct? Or do you think someone else should have been in the bottom instead of yourself? It is what it is at the end of the day. Yeah. We all knew it was going to yeah. be me in the bottom. I had the worst showing in the dress because that was the challenge to mm -hmm. construct and make something. The ball is an addition to the challenge. Like mm -hmm. it, it can save you from being bottom low safe or high top safe. So that could be the teetering deciding back to the other two looks. It is really, truly based off what we were creating. And yes, my dress was terrible. If we're taking into consideration everything, yeah, Juju didn't have the strongest showing in the ball, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. It is what it is. The lipstick was chosen. Did you- Don't trigger me, madam. No, I, no I'm sorry. It's uh, the flooding's coming back. I'm sorry. Quickly, talking about judges, uh, Daisy Mae Cooper. This butch queen look, right? I want a dildo designed on that look <laughs> because I know that will make me- <laughs> Oh my God. She was hilarious throughout the episode. What was it like having her as a judge? Look, they didn't, they didn't show how much, like we, we had a really like good fun rapport and connection. Mm. She was- hysterical there were some things that wouldn't be able to make the air 
because really? there were that out there. <laughs> I mean, saying she wanted to have a dildo made out of Jimbo was something, but that was that was one of the tame ones. So I was so happy that mm. there was somebody on the panel that was so joyous and hysterical that just lifted the room. And like Alan was there as well. We always have a hoot and a holler with Alan. Oh yeah, we all love Alan. Good energy, yes, I love that. Category is Class Clown. I can't vote myself, can I? <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> No, but like, I I was the one that was just like, look, if anybody's having a down day, let's just have a camp hold time and let's just lift the room. But if I had to vote somebody else, I'd probably go for Class Clown was Blue. She was always throwing shades, keeping jokes coming, and she kept the energy up as well. So I hope she did it after I left. Oh, Blue is, is unwavering when it comes yeah. to being a Class Clown and the shadiest. Yeah. Let's talk about that lip sync. Now, it's a shame that you weren't able to lip sync for yourself. Do you know what I mean? Because we know you're the dancing diva and you would have pulled out some stops. But what was it like watching Jimbo and Janie lip sync and especially to that RuPaul song that uh, certain people online have a lot of opinions about? <laughs> It's so weird watching the lip syncs from behind because you never know mm. what actually happened. Like, mm. I genuinely thought Vinegar was staying on season one because I, I didn't see what something was doing from the front. Mm. Um, so you just can't gauge it. And I thought, you know what? Jimbo didn't fall over, so she was winning in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It, it is what it is. Like, mm. it's the mm. nature of the game. We can't, we can't fight for our lives. We just have to say look keep me around i wasn't i wasn't yeah. gonna be like orgy i'm open to alliances mm. i i kept it 100 i was like if you save me i'm not gonna outright say i'm gonna save you but if you're doing well in the competition i'm playing the game yeah. fair and to be honest i think i was the only one playing the game fair from the get-go i think there may be a few alliances uh happening this season this episode was starting to build on that a little bit so hmm. I mean, Interesting. I, why she? I honestly think I'm going to do a lip sync series and perform every single lip sync and just show the divas what they missed out on because she turned it. Give the fans what they want. And you know what they want? The content, mama. The content. Famously. Famously. <laughs> <laughs> right. They, they're going to hate us doing this. They're going to hate us. It's, it's going to be it's going to be terrible. Were you rooting for one person in a hope that you'd be saved? I genuinely thought Jimbo had my back mm -hmm. from that chit chat. Like I was like, because you never know with Jimbo, she's a loose cannon. <laughs> you never know what's yeah. going to come out of her mouth. But I, I genuinely thought, right, if she wins this, I have a chance of staying. But from from the jump, sitting down in that chair, I was like, do you know what? Janie's made up her mind. She's basing it off the challenge. And look, I was a bastard, so <laughs> I'm going <Yeah>. home. <laughs> You were the bastard, but yes, it did feel a bit cold when you did go speak to Jamie, uh, like they'd already made up their mind. So when you said it in your confessional that it was tense, I was like, oh yes. I could feel the tension. Look, I'm sure Janie was scared to lip sync against mm. me if we were in the top the next week. Oh. So uh, that's probably oh. why. <laughs> uh, the battle of the divas. <laughs> uh, um, just quickly speaking about Jimbo. She's got off to such an amazing start. I think the world is really loving Jimbo. Uh, she got really emotional speaking about, uh, speaking to, sorry, RuPaul uh, in the workroom. Did you speak to her at all about what that meant for her? Because Canada didn't have RuPaul's Drag Race. Exactly. Like, we we as Drag Race UK are so lucky and honoured to have mm -hmm. Michelle and Ru and Alan and Graham because that that is, as drag artists, Rue is that one queen that everybody knows, everybody looks up to, and everybody can relate to. And like, I, I am forever in debt to Rue for giving me not just one opportunity, but two. So I can completely understand where Jimbo was coming from. Like, you've done an entire season, you've been in this world, and this is the first time you're having one-on-one -on -one time with Rue. And like, it is overwhelming. I remember the first time on season one, I was like, Rue's saying my name. Rue's laughing at me, he's being a silly tit and a wig. Like, it's one of those things that you just, <laughs> you you have to pinch yourself. You're like, what the hell's going on? What? Little old mm. Chez from Essex County. Like, what's going on? The Chez from Essex. Okay. Thank you, madam. Category is Miss Congeniality. 
Me. You I'm not can't sorry. nominate yourself. Why, Shay? I'm sorry. They're all horrible. <laughs> I would say I would say Pangina, even though she sent my good Judy Lemon home, I'd say Pangina because she has got so much heart and soul. And she genuinely was so helpful in that last couple of minutes before we had to get ready for the runway. Like she was there, we got ready together, we would chit chat, we were in stations together, and she's just so happy for everything that she's given in life, much like myself. So I would give Miss Kundruni out to if not to me, but to Pangina. <laughs> Pangina a close second. Very close. Throw, throw my picture up there anyway. I, I, I need more hair time. <laughs> you and Blue had the most moving chat about gender identity this episode. Obviously, Blue spoke about Davina, who helped her open her mind to the idea of other genders, gender being a spectrum. I was just wondering, is there anyone from Drag Race, uh, whether it's your season or other seasons, uh, that you've learned something from? Um, I've learned from Vaga how not to do makeup. <laughs> I am joking. I'm joking. I love that with all my heart. So, no, like, look, when you are thrust into an environment like that, of course you are going to learn so much from everybody. I learned so much from Davina about, like, Section 28 and stuff like that on Season 1. I learned so much from Pangina on this season about Thai culture and how they, they the drag scene operates in Thailand. It, it's like a completely different world because it's not the hugest scene, but if you're there, you're doing the damn thing. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was just in awe of everything that I was learning from her. And to be honest, having queens, seasoned queens like Juju and Mo being like, go, I wouldn't do that because I'm six years into the game. I'm still learning as the days go by. I, I'm I'm good at what I do, but the minute you stop growing as an artist, you're done. Mm -hmm. So there's always room to grow, to push yourself and to evolve. And I will always be open ears to everybody. Some people get really like uppity if somebody gives them some advice and try and push people like to better themselves as person. Like we're not doing it to be shady. We're here, here to help and grow yeah. people. Yeah. So I'm always I'm always open ears to what anybody wants to say to little old Chesney. Not always, unless it's hate, and then that's a no. That only comes from me. <laughs> yeah, uh, then they can piss off. Then they can do one. <laughs> Is there anything that you wish had made the episode that didn't? No, to be honest. From season one, even these two episodes, I feel like everything was very, very true to how it was. I mm. didn't feel like nothing didn't make the cut. I didn't mm. feel like nothing was missed like everything mm. happened as it was in yeah. all honesty i wish everybody got to see my full talent show but you know we've got we it, well, it's more than an hour's long episode so there's a lot to oh. cram into one episode so yeah. i wish i wish people could have seen the dance break that i did and turned it out on that talent show mom i think you need to put it on the youtubes put it online i want to see it all come why she I, I'm going to be performing at every single show from now on, trust and believe. Yes. Well, to round up the yearbook, we need a yearbook quote from you. It could be absolutely anything to round up your time on Drag Race UK versus the world. Right. You'll, you'll enjoy this one. Famously mediocre, but not so mediocre anymore. Yes! Yes! I Did love you like it. that one? You've famously. got you've got to put the accent on the famously. Famously. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Shez, I love you from the bottom of my heart. Working with you, knowing you has been a pleasure. It's been such a joy. And I know you're gonna go further and further. You've actually got something to plug. Uh you have a, a single I hear. Do you know what? I am so excited because when you first come off Drag Race, you hit the ground running in the words of Vanity Milani. You literally hustle and work and do everything you need to do to boost your voice and your profile and your platform. That now I'm like, do you know what? I've done the hard work. I've done the grafting. I'm going to do the stuff that I want to do. And I'm so excited to put out something that I've aspired to since I was like a wee little baby. Like I was so excited to be a pop girly, a pop diva, because that's what I've wanted to do in drag for the longest time. Mm. So I'm ready for everybody to hear the anthem that is Need the Power, because you need the power, I will turn mm -hmm. you on. And it's out on Friday. So honestly, yeah. 
You better be streaming, Divalina. Oh, absolutely. The kids will be streaming. I'm just so annoyed that I couldn't be in the video. <laughs> right, everybody, listen to this. <laughs> I said to Waishi, I texted her, I was like, will you be in a music video? I need my church diva twirling in the background. And she was like, I've got my hat, I'm ready. And then we text her on the day, go, hi, are you ready for 3pm uh, Waishi? Oh, I thought it was like, oh, I thought it was next week. I was like, for goodness sake. So do you know what? The next one, you're getting a feature. Thank you. And I'll be there on time, ready and prepared. I'm going to give you a three month notice, madam. You're going to have to. Well, thank you so much, Shez. It's been an absolute pleasure, a joy. I love you. And I can't wait to see what you do next. Honestly, I'm very excited. Here's to another panto, madam. Here's to another panto. Here we go. Yes. Famously. Famously. <laughs> you look very beautiful, why, she? <laughs> Thank you very much. Well. Like, <laughs> I love you. Take care, and I'll see you later. I love you, madam. Bye.